You're making a bit of a habit of becoming a decent fighter, aren't you? <laughs> they, they, uh, they underestimate you. So I'm just uh, chatting, by the way, James. Yeah. I have a habit of ruining yeah, people's uh, night time. Thank victory. you. Yeah. Well, as Gareth said, you know, you've uh, been pulling some upsets from time to time. What's, this is a big win for you. Give me an idea what the emotion is like for you right now. Uh, you know what? I'm on cloud nine right now. Uh, like, I, like I said before, you know, I've been a um, big fan of Frank's. I'm still a big fan of Frank's. And just to go in there in the cage with them is a, is a great honor. And to, especially to come out with a win, it puts me on cloud nine. Yeah, no doubt. You, you, you were in some difficult spots. I mean, you don't want to be underneath Frank Mir, right, with him in side control. I mean, give me an idea kind of what, what you were thinking at that time. And, uh, you know, did you feel in danger at all as he was looking to, to take your arm? Uh, you know, when he was on top of me, he had real good control. And I could feel his, his, his weight and his control on top of me. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of things that we work at our gym, and it was a lot of things that he was going for, like the Camoras, the North South. So I, I felt those transactions coming, and I was able to react, and I was able to, to stop them. Yeah. And when you were on the feet, you did a lot of damage. I mean, it went close. Did, did you have an idea that the, the clinch was going to be a good spot for you? I mean, was that the game plan? Uh, you know what? The game plan was kind of just uh, stick and move, kind of like how I did against Roy. Mm. But uh, he, he wanted to clinch up with me, and that was my opportunity to use uh, the elbows I've been working a lot with, uh, a lot on, and uh, they worked. But how satisfying have you to get a verbal submission from someone of his standing? You know what, that's, that's probably like one of the best feelings to know that. Like, I have great respect for Frank, but like, that I made him quit, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Do we know exactly what happened? I mean, obviously it's him, not you, but do you know exactly what happened to him that, that he did tap? Uh, when, we're, when we're going through the exchange, I hit him a few times. I seen his mouthpiece come out, and then I I, I turned Stay him onto active. the I, yeah I turned him onto the cage. I threw an elbow. I threw I started throwing light punches, and then I heard him say, "Oh, my tooth came out." And then uh, the Beltran didn't do nothing, so I just kept hitting. I didn't want to I didn't want to stop and lose my position. And then all of a sudden he started tapping, and I looked at Beltran while he's tapping. I was gonna say it looked like you were I don't say confused, but I mean because he was basically tapping the back of your head, right? Yeah, I, I mean, did, did you know what was going on? At first, I felt him tap my shoulder, and then he started tapping my head, and that's when I knew like, oh, he's he's giving up. Was he running out of teeth? Then? Uh, I don't know. I, I was thinking I was gonna knock a, knock him each out, but yeah. uh, that's a great explanation of that exchange. But fighters can often feel the flow of the fight in there, and we can't. Did you feel any kind of signs that? Uh, inkling that it was going your way before that exchange. Uh, you know, after the, towards the end of the first round, I felt him tiring out, I, and I knew it was gonna. The second round was gonna be. I was gonna be a lot more dominant. I knew he, from the beginning of the fight, before this fight, I knew he was gonna come out strong in the first round. He's gonna try to take me down, and he's gonna feel strong. But I knew when it when it came out it came out later into the the later rounds that I was gonna, I was gonna come. My heart was gonna start showing. Was that part of the benefit of training with guys, smaller guys like a Joe Soto, uh, being used to those tiresome scrambles and stuff? Did that also help you prepare? As well? Yeah, I felt like you know it made me uh, it made me move faster, and it I got to constantly keep moving and moving, so I, I don't really get as tired as quick. Like I could have fought three, four, five more rounds if you wanted me to. Winners get to call their shots. So what's uh, what's next for you? You think? Uh, you know what? It's whoever Bellator wants to put in front of me, um, I'll fight whoever they want me to. Are you gonna creep up on the heavyweight title belts? You're gonna stay with it until you, you actually win that belt, have you? Yeah, you know I'm gonna try to do my best, beat, keep beating guys, keep climbing the ladder until until I get a title shot, or until Bellator feels like I'm ready for a title shot, and then I'll uh, I'll be able to go out there and show what I got. If you can win a couple more, I mean obviously you know there's some um, Bader and uh, Bader and Nico fighting in the final of the, the heavyweight tournament. What would it be like for you to face Fedor? Uh, you know that'd be a dream come true. Um, just like Frank, you know, Fader's been an idol of mine since the, since the get-go. Like before I even started fighting, I I, I loved watching him fight, and uh, I, I see him as a, as a legend in the sport. And you're becoming the legend killer, then. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you.